If you've been on the internet at all, you would have seen the ramen chain Ichidan, where you sit down in your small cube and without talking to anyone, get handed a big, steaming bowl of ramen. But why wait in long queues when you're in the land of ramen? We've got a list of mouth-watering restaurants throughout Tokyo for you. But first up, we're not going to just be eating some ramen, we're going to make it ourselves. Welcome back! We are at a ramen cooking class today with a trained chef and we're going to see what makes a good bowl of ramen. Normally it can take over 24 hours to make a good bowl of ramen, but today we're going to do a super quick version, which is only three hours. <laughs> but it's still going to be super intense, so wish us luck. In a lively neighborhood in central Tokyo, the Baba Ramen Cooking Class is for those who want to have a hands-on ramen experience. Today we'll be learning how to make the noodles, broth, and prepare the toppings all under the guidance of Andrew Baba, a British-Japanese trained ramen chef who's combined his ramen skills and bilingual ability into a fun, jam-packed class. Before we get started, the most important thing to know is the different kinds of ramen. As Andrew explained, there's two main ramen broths, chintan, which is a clear soup, and paitan, a thick, cloudy soup. Then after that, you have the seasoning, which can either be miso, shoyu, soy sauce, or shio, so. If you look online and you Google what types of ramen there are, they'll say there's four main types. They'll say there's shoyu, shio, miso, and tonkotsu. That isn't quite right. These are the main soup broths, and these are the seasonings to these soup broths. So just to give you a better understanding of why there is these kind of layers. In class, we'll be using a tonkotsu broth, but later on, we'll venture out to try different ramen types and give you a list of restaurants in Tokyo where you can find them. Wish us luck for all the ramen we'll be eating today and let us know in the comments what your favorite type of ramen is. First up, we've got to get the broth going. This involves breaking a whole lot of pork bones <gasps> and getting them into the pressure cooker. A burning question we had for Andrew is why does ramen broth take so long to cook and how are we going to do it in only three hours? After the Kanto the earthquake, that's when like ramen exploded. The regional ramen was kind of exploding. Uh, it was because it, ramen was the main thing that they could make with all the stuff that they had. So it's trying to be nutritious and also to save what they have. So that's why they'll make ramen and boil it for a long time because they'll utilize what they have more so by doing so. And it's this continued kind of process with the current day. What we used in class today, that would normally feed probably like 40 people. But because we're condensing it within three hours, we have to use a lot more bones, and that's why we're able to get a relatively good tonkotsu, but we're being a lot more wasteful. Once we had the broth going, it was time to move on to the noodles. We're making them from scratch through a process of mixing, kneading, and then stomping to make sure the wet and dry ingredients are well combined. Here are my noodles. They're nice and flat after stepping on them. I don't know what we're doing with them next, but I'm excited to see what happens. The last step is to turn the dough into noodles. Cassie stepped up to the plate for that task, expertly guiding her dough through the machine. Meanwhile, I began to help prepare some of the toppings and a side dish of gyoza. And let's just say, there's a reason why Cassie comes on as our fabulous oh food gosh. host when we're doing these videos. Yeah. We learned two different methods for folding gyoza, and even with the help of Andrew, mine didn't turn out so well. <laughs> one more time. Don't look at that one. Don't look at it. Despite my failed folding attempts, we were able to make some pretty nice looking gyoza. Everyone in the class had also helped to prepare a range of delicious looking toppings. So the last thing to do was get the seasoning ready and cook the noodles. And we have chopsticks. Mm -hmm. So we'll start quite vigorously like this. Depending on the restaurant, you may get to pick the hardness of your noodles. This ranges from soft to very hard, and it really depends on your personal preference. Before we try the finished dish, there's one piece of etiquette advice that Andrew has for us. What you're meant to do is have a spoonful of the soup first, and then just the noodles, and then you can go crazy. It's rude to the chef if you don't do it in that kind of manner. Don't stir your bowl before we try it, yeah? Before it's untouched, try the soup as it's meant to be given to you. Mm. It's quite like a velvety, smooth soup. Mm. The noodles are perfect. Tonkotsu ramen, which is served at chains like the earlier mentioned Ichidan, is generally a crowd pleaser. 
But now that the class is finished, it's time to try some more varieties and give you a list of where you can find great ramen in Tokyo. From Megado, we've traveled over to the scenic spot of Odaiba, where you can find Tokyo Ramen Kokugikan. This is a food hall with around five different restaurants selling ramen varieties from all over Japan. We wouldn't necessarily recommend this spot for its exceptional ramen quality, but for the purpose of trying different ramen types, it works well. And if you sit on the terrace, you'll be eating with a beautiful view. So we've seen how ramen is made in the class. Now it's time to try the different kinds. Because there are quite a lot of different kinds of ramen all around Japan. Specifically, there are three base flavors like we learned in the class. And then you add all these different layers on top of it. So you add the broth and you add the toppings and you can do so much with that, which means that Basically, any region you go to has its own kind of specialty. So for example, we have the Hokkaido ramen here, which is known for its butter and corn, and it is a miso ramen. Whereas this is a Kanagawa shoyu ramen, so this is a soy-based ramen. If you're looking for a restaurant specializing in miso in Tokyo, we recommend trying out Shinbu Sakya ramen in Shibuya. Or if you're in the east, check out the chain Do Miso with the main store in Ginza. While many ramen places will have their own specialty, a lot of them will also carry a soy sauce ramen or even a salt ramen. And these are usually combined with a slightly lighter broth in comparison to something that is a bit more heavy like tonkotsu. An example of one of the ramen places that carries a lot of different types of ramen is Afudi, which has a lot of different spots around Tokyo. One other location for soy sauce ramen is Jun Teuchi Daruma, which is headed by a well-known ramen chef who prepares the noodles right in front of you. Or for a good salt ramen, along with a range of other flavors, our recommendation is Oderu Shio Ramen in Shibuya. To order, a lot of ramen shops have a similar process. First, choose and pay for the ramen you want from a vending machine at the front of the store. A lot of the time, these will only take cash, so make sure to have some on hand. Then take your ticket from the vending machine and give it to the staff so they can start preparing your meal. You may get a buzzer or number to collect your ramen or it will be brought to you. Traditionally, ramen is made with a fish or meat broth, but in recent years, there have been more and more places that cater to different dietary requirements, such as vegan, vegetarian, and halal. Yeah, so in uh, Tokyo behind us here, for example, for vegan and vegetarian, you can go somewhere like Tea's Tantan. There's a store located at Tokyo Station. There's also some over in Shibuya Station area, like Jikase Mensho. And for halal ramen, there is a location over in Ebisu. This, of course, is not an exhaustive list of ramen in Tokyo. There's so many restaurants that you could choose from. For deciding where to go, we got one last piece of advice from Andrew. Anywhere that has an English menu, I would say stray away from because they're going to be catering to more foreigners' tastes rather than the Japanese cuisine. And to go for somewhere that is no English in terms of them speaking as well as like their menu and then ask for osusume and I ask for a recommendation. I would say that's the best way in that respect. That was a lot of ramen. It was a lot of ramen. Leave a like if you um, appreciated how much we ate today. And let us know in the comments which one you would try. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.